Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and thank you for joining Neo4j Live, Wardley Mapping with Neo4j. And yeah, first of all, hi, Tom. How's it going? Hi, I'm fine. Hope you're fine too. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm uh, in a different location today, so I hope everything works in terms of audio and video, but uh, it, seems, uh, it seems it's coming through. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you, everybody, for, for joining this uh uh, this Neo4j Live today. I think this is the first one for this year. Um, so uh, I guess Happy New Year is still in order. So uh, <laughs> Happy New Year, Tom. <laughs> Happy New Year. And Happy New Year, everybody. I don't know. Maybe you, uh, it, it always feels like weird this this time of year, right? I mean, it's in between. Uh, you you Have you said Happy New Year already? Is it too too late already? Don't, don't, shouldn't you say it anymore? I guess it's, it's okay, I, I hope. <laughs> I think it's still okay. So by the end of January, it starts to get weird. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> and I've got some time. So um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm I'm very much looking forward to this to this episode today. So uh, um, uh, wordly mapping with Neo4j. Um, but but first, maybe before we before we dive into the topic, uh, Tom, uh, maybe we uh, uh, we give a few moments to the audience to explain to you who you are and what you do. So I, um, I, I know you are on Twitter. I know you founded ta Tangible uh, Concepts. Uh, you're based in Germany. And um, yeah, uh, you, you play with Wardley Maps and among other things, I guess. Uh, so that's, that's, that's one of the things. But maybe you, you want to wanna share in your own words a few things about who you are, what you do uh, out, outside yes. maybe of Wardley Maps. Um, as well. Okay, I, I, I try to. Uh, you you yeah. said all the all the important stuff already. So um, I'm based <laughs> oh, in, in Germany. I'm a developer, trainer, architect. I founded Tangible Concepts. So we're specialized in all stuff that deals with uh, software architecture. And so we're using a lot of wordlay mapping um, when it comes to decision making. So um, I, for myself, discovered wordlay mapping a couple of years ago and founded a um, very interesting uh, new way to to look at uh, decision making and for uh, for example to open your ideas to others so uh, others can challenge your assumptions so that's a basic idea um, it's about mm -hmm. um, creating a situational awareness and we need a lot of situational awareness when we do uh, software architecture when we make architectural decisions because architectural decisions outlast the uh, projects that they uh, were made for um, they are long-lasting decisions, and so they're strategic by nature. So it's a natural thing to um, use some, some technique to visualize uh, the, uh, um, the approach that we're taking um, and to, to make it understandable why we um, chose, for example, one technology for, uh, over another. Maps mm -hmm. are very helpful with that. And yeah. Some times ago, uh, I was in a project where we were doing extensively uh, wordly mapping and we had tons of, of maps and we had the problem that we uh, had to reason about all that stuff and we needed a way to, to make all that stuff um, analyzable. So we needed mm -hmm. another approach. It's not just about mapping, it's about analyzing maps. So this is why we ended up uh, using graph databases. Okay. Very cool. So I guess this is also sort of almost explaining uh, or answering my next my next question is is how did you how did you come to the to the world of graphs? I mean, when you when you um, when you look at the um, the, the, the a map, uh, it, it kind of like uh, oftentimes it alludes a little bit to to a, to a graph. It has a as has a some somewhat graphy structure by 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 default, I guess, but. Um, is 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 that is that how it how how new how Neo 4 j and graphs came came to to you or or did you know uh, Neo 4 j and graphs before and then you you thought oh hey Wadley maps Neo 4 j hmm, let's combine. Hmm. Well, it, it wasn't a natural fit at first glance because uh, yeah. there's a huge difference between maps and graphs, and that is uh, that position has a meaning on a map, obviously, uh, and position is uh, more or less meaningless in the visual representation of a graph, which doesn't yes. mean that you can't store a map as a graph. Um, so I had to, to come to, to this conclusion first. Um, 
I mm -hmm. know Neo4j uh, for quite some time, uh, but I have never used it uh, before. Um, we, we created a, a small uh, side project, which is called Parsley. I'll show that later on. Um, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was for me the first time to get really in touch with, with, uh, with graph databases. And it was a fun and interesting journey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I meant when I say maps and uh, and, and and graphs are so similar. So it's like, a, uh, and you're right. Uh, the the location is is not is not represented in uh, on 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 a visual point in um in a graph, but the let's say a city connected with a street with another city or or something like this. This is uh, you can let's say maybe look like abstract a map into a graph pretty pretty easily. Uh, and yeah. and have it uh, have it there. Yeah. Yeah. So the connections um, are, are the thing uh, that we're talking yeah. about, and these are yeah. meaningful as well. Um, and that's what what we're interested in. Though the connections are uh, what makes it worthwhile to to look at uh, um, at, at the map uh, with the with mm -hmm. the graph database and to use structured queries on that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, any anything else people should know about you? Not not yet, but you you may you're free to ask, and we are we're happy to to answer questions um, in the yeah. comments. Exactly, that's that's a good good hint. Uh, so if you if you're watching this live, please uh, let let us know. I I, I asked uh, before we before we now switched it on. I, I asked in, in in chat if anybody is using worldly maps, know what they are, what 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 they are, and uh, and 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 if if they have some experience. And I have uh, a couple of people. Uh, Ravi, Mike, they answered they are both uh, worked a little bit with uh, with Wadley Maps and have worked a little bit with Neo4j as well. So they are interested in in hearing and seeing what what can be done here. I think, uh, and I speak for myself, but obviously also for maybe some some other people watching now. I think, hey, Wadley Maps, what is he talking about? What what is this? So uh, and and you said a few words in the beginning, but maybe we we. Um, um, we spend a few moments on on explaining um, what's what's a Wadley map, how how does it how does it work, and how how do you use it? Yes, well, I prepared some um, uh, a brief introduction to Wadley mapping. We can go through that uh, mm -hmm. if you if you like to. Um, I'll have to share my screen just a moment. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll get the text uh, out of the way. Here we go. Yeah, Peter also says he used Wadley Maps a bit, so I guess it's uh, it's it's a it's a fairly known known concept uh, uh, in uh, in our viewership. At least, well, three people said they know it. Now nobody else said they they don't know it. So I I can only assume um, what what uh, what I see. But uh, but yeah, I mean. Uh, it's uh, it's around for a while. I saw. I mean, I, I know from uh, Wikipedia says was uh, created uh, by Simon Wardley in 20, 2005. So that's almost twenty years ago. Stink oh, here Fruit, we go. Thank you. I don't. I don't <laughs> know it. Uh, Stinkfruit says he doesn't know it or she. They don't know it. I don't. I don't know it well either. So with the, it's the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, I hope you can see the slides now. Yes, uh, okay. put it on. Yeah. Okay, so this is yeah. a, a brief introduction to to Wardley mapping. So you don't have to be a Wardley mapping expert to to follow the, the rest of this um, of this session. Great. Um, <laughs> Well, let's start with a map that most of you are familiar with. So that's Google Maps, and we use that uh, on a daily on a daily basis to uh, find our way from A to B. So, um, what makes maps like this so useful for us? It's because uh, they um, show a lot of detail uh, with a single picture. So we get a lot of information from just uh, one one map. So there's, for example. Um, the surroundings of ourselves. We see positions from for, uh, from from us, from others. Helpful information about uh, the landscape that we are moving in, and. Um, this map is specific to a certain context. So we can't just uh, take a map from, this is Munich, for example, and find our way uh, in, a, in another city. Um, this map helps us to navigate from uh, 
or current position to a desired goal. So you all know that. Um, it shows us a bit more. There's more information about stuff um, that we do not have direct influence on, like traffic jams, for example, or uh, like blocked roads, or the information mm -hmm. about uh, the departure time for trains. And uh, wouldn't it be very uh, helpful to have maps like this one for a business context or for our projects, for example, something that shows us the direct context that we are moving in. And that's what Wardley mapping is about. So it's about um, creating situational awareness about the landscapes that we are moving in. Um, so this is an example of, a, of an easy Wadley map. Um, if you um, don't understand what you're looking at uh, right now, uh, we'll come to that. Uh, we come to that point in a couple of minutes. So um, at first glance, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it looks a bit messy, and it, 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 uh, it's not too uh, too similar to what you've seen in the map before. But there's some similarities. Uh, this is a mm -hmm. visual tool as well. So obviously maps are visual tools. Um, this map is also context specific, more on that context uh, in, in a minute. Um, you see some components with a speci special meaning. There's a visual vocabulary, which, which is meaningful. And we see some kind of movement as well. So these uh, arrows and lines, they have a certain meaning for the context that we are moving in. Um, so the context for this map is uh, the development of a software system uh, uh, for insurance users to, to handle damage cases. So we see some components here. There's a service portal. There's users using the service portal. They've got an, uh, a, uh, a need, which is to process claims, uh, damage claims, for example. And uh, there's other stuff on that map, like an AI advisor contract management system and an operations platform. Okay, so that's a bit messy for, for now. Let's start small by creating the map from, from scratch. Um, first of all, we have to understand the axis of this map. So we start with uh, the vertical axis, which is for visibility. Um, visibility means um, the higher, the, the more on the top we uh, arrange a certain component, the more visible it is for the current user. So we use um, an mm -hmm. anchor point for our map. And uh, we see, for example, the service portal is, uh, is somewhere on the top because users are interacting directly with this service portal. There's another thing required to run the service portal, which is an operations platform like cloud provider, stuff like that. Um, it's required but it's not visible for, for the user. So it's part mm -hmm. of the map, but it's placed rather on the lower end um, of this uh, visibility uh, axis. Um, visibility is always related to the anchor that we are choosing. In this case, it's the user. And if you uh, choose another um, anchor like developers, the visibility of the components may change as well. So for example, for a developer, which uh, had the task to, to do maintenance work on the service portal, for example, uh, the visibility of the operations platform is different because developers are interacting way more with the operations platform directly than uh, ordinary users do. And for yeah. operators, for example, it's a total different thing because they are, mm -hmm. um, they are uh, interacting with the platform uh, directly. So, was there a question? No, that was that that, that made it that made it very clear. And uh -huh. especially, I think the, the the last point is is interesting that you that you flip it around. So, uh, depending on your on your view point basically or usage with the with the um, the application in this case, you have um, more visibility on the operations platform than on the on the on the on the front end. Yeah, so mapping is always uh, related to to the user, which makes it very useful uh, when we are when we are talking about um, product de uh, development, or if, if you're talking about um, create um, to, to create a strategy um, for um, the development of software system, because we are always um, looking from a user's perspective on the con on the given context. Okay, so. Let's take a look at the uh, horizontal axis, which is the core, comp uh, the, the core concept of uh, Wardley mapping. Um, the horizontal axis uh, stands for evolution. And so this means um, every component uh, moves from left to right when the component itself evolves. 
when we're putting something on the left border of the um, on the on the uh, to the left side of the of the map. Um, components can be described with terms like chaotic or exciting, but uh, rare, unusual, the stuff that is a, a bit vague. And the more and more mm -hmm. uh, evolved the component becomes, the more it moves to the right and can be characterized by um, uh, terms like um, measurable, stable, um, essential, ubiquitous. So, um, Position has a meaning, and by posi positioning components along the evolution axis, uh, we are able to to tell something about the anticipated uh, degree of, of uh, evolution of a certain component. Um, what this means is dependent on the uh, context that we're that we're using. So, for example, a component could be a software product, or it could be the knowledge that we have about a, a te technology or a product. So, let's start the example by creating um, a simple map. Normally, uh, maps are way more messy than this one. So this is a good example to, to get <laughs> us started. Uh, we chose the user of a software system uh, as anchor point. This user has a certain need. He needs to pro process um, damage claims in, in a, the context of an uh, insurance company. And um, as already told, uh, uh, there's a service portal which helps to fulfill um, this task. The service portal itself needs a contract management system, another software system was, which needs to be around in, the, in, in this uh, um, environment, and an operations platform to run those software systems on. And there's another component, the AI advisor, um, something that has to, that's uh, supposed to give some helpful hints to, to the users. And therefore it needs a connection to the contract, contract management system to know about all the customer contracts and um, build a knowledge base and stuff like that. So all that should help uh, when dealing uh, and processing damage claims. That's our initial situation. And as you can see here, uh, we made some assumptions about the evolution, uh, the degree of evolution of these components. For example, the operations platform is far on the right side. It's kind of uh, uh, ubiquitous um, to us. It's like, um, like, uh, something that we, we don't worry about. It's just there because we're using, for example, cloud resources. We don't have to, to, um, to do all that stuff uh, on our own. But you see that the service portal and the contract management system, um, they are more on the left side. To make it easier for us uh, to characterize the components, we can divide the evolution axis in some segments and um, give these segments um, some uh, some um, how you, labels to make it easier for us to, to characterize these components. And um, the service portal and the contract management system are custom built systems. So they are more mm -hmm. on the left side. Um, the AI advisor is uh, something experimental. So it's even more on the left uh, uh, side and needs to evolve a bit further. So the next thing that we, that we could um, do is to take this map and discuss if everything is uh, on the on the right uh, position. One of the most valuable tasks when doing mapping is not creating the map itself, but talking about the map. So for example, we could uh, challenge the assumptions. And if you do this in a team, in a group, normally questions arise like, why did you put it there? Why is it not uh, more visible to the user? Why did you put it so, so far on the left side? Why not on the right side? Where is component X? Uh, why didn't you choose to put Y on the map? And these are the questions that we really want to to um, to talk about uh, when making uh, long-lasting decisions. So it's not about a single person uh, driving a, a decision. It's about uh, telling what are the basic assumptions that lead to a decision. And these could be um, this could be the initial situation for further. Um, for further uh, decisions uh, regarding these software platforms. So mm -hmm. um, when we look at this map, we could ask questions like, hmm, is it wise to have uh, the main software systems in a less developed or less evolved state? Both service portal and contract management system um, are not, not uh, much uh, evolved. So this could be a, a risk for uh, our business model, for example. Mm -hmm. 
what does ev evolution mean at this point? So it could mean it's not meeting all the service requirements. It, it may uh, fail to deliver some quality attributes. So this uh, could, could be one uh, definition of uh, being less evolved. But there's also other stuff like chances. Um, we could also see that uh, investments in the CDI advisor could be um, a good idea to um, help in the to aid in the process um, of the of of processing um, claims from for the, the office clerks. So this could be uh, an assumption that we we make uh, after looking at the map and. Now it's time to add some movement. So it's time to to think about what could what what's possible or what possible um, uh, measures should we take to improve on this situation. So for example, uh, when talking about what could be improved with a service portal, one uh, one idea could be to improve their overall user exp uh, experience. So this is what we are what we are um, showing with these red arrows on a on a map. So this mm, means. Okay. The service portal should should improve, should evolve uh, further by improving the um, user experience. And there's other measures that could be taken for the other systems as well. So we could build up more know-how about machine learning to improve the AI advisor, and we could uh, improve the, impo the performance of the contract management system. Typically, all this just uh, comes from just... just, just um, it, doesn't come just from looking at the map. So there's some experience uh, re required. So the map doesn't tell you, OK, you have to improve the performance. But by looking at the map and discussing the, the assumptions that lead to this map, uh, we could um, talk with, this, with, with people that are using the contact management system, system and find out what are um, current problems or what could uh, mm -hmm. be done to improve uh, the current system. So for example, to, to um, yeah, focus on, on quality attributes. And we can do this on and on and on, find more uh, stuff that could be done to improve the situation. And we should also talk about stuff that is um, um, an impediment to improvements that should be made. Though so one of the concepts from Wardley mapping, uh, which is very helpful, uh, is to think about inertia. That's, uh, inertia means something that uh, helped you in the past it was a success factor in the, in the past to, to keep us in business or even to make business, uh, but which is um, hindering us from um, improving our current state. So for example, uh, in the okay. past, there might, might be a decision uh, to focus the development purely on backend tasks, which is why it's so hard to improve the service portal now uh, when it comes to improve the user exper uh, uh, experience, because nobody has the knowledge for that. For that. So okay. the map is capable to show all that. The movement that we have to to undertake. We have uh, we see the the measures to take, but we also uh, see what is hindering us from doing all these improvements. So, in the end, a map, a simple map, could look like that. We depict the current situation. We show what we are uh, intending to do. We show our anticipated uh, areas of interest, like these are chances, these are risks, and we, we can um, uh, challenge those assumptions uh, by showing these, this map to others. Uh, one mm -hmm. thing that I am um, using Wardley maps very frequently is to show um, our intended strategy to stakeholders, for example. So when it comes to decisions mm -hmm. like changing a technology or changing a product, there's typically some tasks uh, involved. And we can um, bring all the stuff on, on, on a map and uh, have a visual representation of our strategy, which makes it easy to talk to others about the strategy and to, uh, to, to get their uh, impression on that. So. The takeaways on this very brief introduction should be um, maps are about creating situational awareness, um, which is helpful for finding and assessing risks. Um, we need to, to get a, a basic view on the, on the uh, current context and visualize our assumptions to 
get um, um, a better understanding. And maps are helpful to visualize all that, helpful to visualize strategies. And in the end, we can use them to communicate our strategy. So that's the, uh, the, the quick way to, to, to tell what mapping is about. So oh, I'm breaking the internet. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, is, is it always um, visibility and evolution or, or can, can these two also change? No, that's that. It's all about visibility and evolution. Um, mm -hmm. So what we are looking at is a, a volume uh, chain, uh, and we are adding the the uh, dimension of evolution to that. So yeah. um, if you're looking at processes in your business, you you uh, you you maybe already have some 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 value chains depicted. You did some value chain uh, chain mapping, for example. And the next step could be to to add evolution for your context and. Uh, there you have a Wadley map. Mm -hmm. So this is how Wadley maps um, can be created, but it's um, um, it's not done with that. So what what do you do if you have a map? So you have to reason about that. Yeah. You have to talk about that um, to challenge all that assumptions I told that uh, earlier on. And um, one thing that really lacks is a tooling to analyze Wadley maps. So typically maps can be drawn uh, on paper, on a whiteboard, can, can be physical work, um, what, whatever fits the need. But in the end, uh, it's just uh, a drawing, a picture or stuff like that. So you can use um, digital whiteboards, for example, that makes it easier to, to create uh, maps uh, when we are in a, in a distributed uh, setting where not everybody's in the same room. Um, I prepared some, some maps for that as well. Just. There is a, a question uh, in, in the chat <clears throat> from Stinkfruit. Uh, would there be a good reason to move a node or a, a point under under connected to a user um, from right to left instead of from left to right? So uh, depending now, yeah. Well, the concept of evolution is about um, something that um, that is driven by a certain force. For example, the market. Yeah, demand and competition are drivers for evolution. So mm -hmm. another way to put this is there's no choice over evolution. So you, you're striving to support evolution, but you're not always able to uh, to evolve stuff like you want this. So it's more or less um, understanding which forces are acting on your con uh, context. So it's possible to have forces acting on your, on your context that are pushing something from right to left, for example. So... Uh, um, for example, when, we, when we're talking about mapping um, quality attributes for software systems, there's something like um, degradation of, of quality. Yeah? Um, mm -hmm. There are some factors which influence uh, this, uh, which are pushing uh, the degradation of, of quality uh, attributes. And this, this could be something like uh, a natural border. You can't evolve faster or further before you move something out of the way, or even it is pushing your component more to the left if you if you um, uh, look at this this context. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes um, the component itself is just sitting where it is; it's not evolving at all, but the rest of the map is evolving. So and this is something uh, oh, okay. very, very interesting. So what does it mean if your product is not evolving, but every other product on the market? So your competitors are moving, so should you. So mm -hmm. um, it's more like, like that. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I was thinking it could be like in, in the example you showed that you have proprietary software you use because it's fine, it's a, it's, a, it's a usage standard, but then you realize actually, if we were to develop our own solution, we would be able to add certain capabilities that the software doesn't have, and then it would move from the known, you know, perfectly usable example mm -hmm. on the right more to the left again, because, but then the, the software moves. It's, it's more evolution for the software in itself, but it's, it's on the map, it's, I guess, a step back. That makes sense. Um... Yeah, kind of. It depends what what uh, what you're what you're striving for. So, for example, if you um, one thing that um, that we uh, face regularly is we see it, that a component is moving to the right because it's uh, evolving, and then it creates a new starting point for new components. For example, we develop oh, okay. something like a platform. 
So somebody invented computing. So all that computing stuff was on the on the far left side. Then stuff evolved and evolved and evolved. We got we got affordable computing. We've got hosting. We've got cloud uh, platforms and some. So it ended up on the right side. And this yep. is the basis for, for, for new uh, stuff appearing in our context, appearing on our maps. So that's, this stuff is related to the platform uh, that is uh, evolved pretty far. But the new stuff uh, uh, emerges on the left side of the map. Mm -hmm. So um, I was talking about uh, maps could be way more uh, messy, like uh, the one that said I chose for the uh, brief introduction. <laughs> so this is a map that I created uh, in a, in a uh, project with, uh, with with some customers. It was another project project than it was than the one I talked before. Um, so um, yeah, I I wiped out all the all the uh, stuff that belongs to to this customer. But you can see um, there's a lot of inertia. There's a lot of movement going on. So this was a strategy to. Um, to rearrange the development processes within a company. So the management uh, had a had a plan, had a, had a strategy to reorganize how software development um, should be done in the company. And it was not really um, fitting to, to, uh, to the situation. So the understanding on how software should be developed was, was, was not um, yeah, was not fitting to uh, the customer's expectations, but it was also not aligned with uh, what, it's, what the developers uh, were doing. So the first thing was to, to map the situation that we were in to find out where are we now with uh, things like um, the, the, um, the basic tasks of software development, quality assurance, deployments, and stuff like that. And then to find uh, measures to, to find... Um, way to to evolve on that and uh, at the end the map helped to understand where the pain points really are because they were at totally different places than they were anticipated before by the management so mm -hmm. um, maps can be a bit messy that's what i wanted to show <laughs> for this yeah. originally Wartley mapping was created to um, support uh, with uh, the creation of business strategies, but uh, it could be used in in, to, in uh, other domains as well. And uh, as I told before, we are using it, for example, to, uh, in, in the area of software architecture. For example, when we're doing architecture evaluation of software systems, um, it's a good idea to uh, focus on quality attributes, and it's possible to to map those attributes and software components on a, on a Wardley map as well. So uh, this map, could uh, tell the story about how the, a certain uh, quality attribute could be improved. So we're seeing a similar uh, setting like in the, in the um, mm -hmm. slides that I showed you. Um, these are stuff that, that you, you already uh, saw. It's a service portal, there's operations platform, the contract management system. But you see also that these components are arranged totally different right? because we changed the anchor. Yeah. Now the need is not to process damage claims. The need is um, to fulfill uh, the the needs to to uh, the, to, to fulfill the um, the quality attributes for this uh, software architecture. For example, the functional suitability. Where does it come from? When doing software architecture evaluation, we start typically with a utility tree. So we have a, a large set of quality attributes that we're talking about, and um, we find. Um, metrics and measures to to uh, reason about uh, the quality of a, of, a, of a given system. And so I picked some of these um, quality attributes and uh, created some maps for this. So when it comes to functional suitability, um, after a, a, a mapping session, maybe um, the team decides on these are the tasks to, to, to do to improve on the situation. So we should improve the quality of the suggestions from the AI advisor, for example. That would uh, would move the AI, the AI advisor more to the right side, evolve it even further. Mm -hmm. I chose a different uh, shape to distinguish between software systems and know-how. So oftentimes, uh, we're not talking about the same type of components on a map. We are talking about different types like products um, and know-how about these products. So this is what, what, uh, what we see here. 
just because there is an, an AI advisor doesn't mean that we have the know-how to uh, further develop this stuff. Okay. So yeah. what, what uh, is on the map here is that we have to develop our understanding of machine learning um, and to develop uh, skills for that. And you also see mm -hmm. um, that there's not, not only the measures that need to be taken, but also there's, uh, there's inertia, something that blocks us from uh, evolving this component further. We can do this with other um, quality attributes as well. So this one is a bit, um, a bit uh, more interesting. There's more movement on this map. Um, there's more stuff to, to be done to um, improve on modifiability. Um, and we could do this with uh, almost all the quality attributes. The maps do look uh, different all the time, but the components are the same. And um, this brings us to the question, what if we do this with all the quality attributes that matter for our context. It could be dozens. Uh, there could be a low, real huge number of maps. And what can we do to find similarities between that? So for example, how do I find, uh, how do I cluster, for example, stuff that belongs together? I want to know about everything that needs to be done on a certain software system. So for example, what needs to be done to improve the contract management system overall, not only for one quality attribute. So obviously on this Miro board, we don't have a uh, any tools to to analyze this any further so we can can stare on this maps so as long as um, as it's just three maps it's it's easy to do that but once it's more and more and more and more and more um it gets a really really hard uh, task so um this was uh the the driver for for us to to think about uh, a small tool to um allow for further anal uh, analysis of, of maps. But um, yeah, how can we, how can we um, do analysis of maps at all if it's not just about uh, looking at the map itself? So when we want to use something like structured queries on this, um, graph databases come to mind, but we have to, to uh, get this maps into a graph database. So one of the things we could do is, okay, we can just type it. Yeah, I mean... Um, hey, Tom, um, maybe before before we do that, uh, there's <clears throat> there's one question uh, in, in chat from Terry. Uh, and I don't know, I'm, I'm not aware of the concept, maybe you are. What about using event storming as input for the Wadley map? Do you know yes. what event storming is? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're yeah, using... Okay. We're using event storming uh, extensively, yeah. in, uh, and um, I think um, doing storming is a good idea to to get all uh, the the stuff that uh, should be placed on the map. So um, the stuff that we are finding when we are doing event storming is typically something different. So we're talking about finding aggregates. We're, we're uh, trying to find uh, events uh, that, that are crossing boundaries, for example, finding those boundaries. So that's what we are focusing on event storming. But the idea is to gather all the relevant people in a, in a room to hand them a bunch of sticky notes and to get uh, all, their, all their knowledge about a certain domain. And uh, in event storming, it works uh, th this way that uh, people just grab these, these blocks of sticky notes, which are uh, color coded, okay. and okay. Um, they put their, their ideas uh, on these, on these uh, stickies, put them on a wall, and it's a collaborative process to, to cluster that, to, to find similarities, to find boundaries between that. So we can do something similar for, for Wardley mapping. So when we do Wardley mapping session, sessions, um, in a, in a larger group, one of the first steps is to gather what uh, could be on the map. So, what are our users? What is their need? What what are their needs? What is the purpose of our map? Just to 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 uh, create a boundary like a scope. Um, what are our capabilities in this context? What do we already have, or what should, what could be required? So, typically, we we get a, um, a whole bunch of um, components that could be placed on a map. And then we have to decide on which, uh, which of these components are, uh, are relevant for, for the given scope. So that's an iterative process uh, to create a, a map in, in a, uh, a larger team setting. OK. OK, cool. And then one, one more question for me. And maybe this, this is a very, very obvious question, but, but may, maybe not. I don't know. Um, 
But in your example where you said, okay, let's improve the the code base of the uh, AI uh, advisor bot, uh, and the the um, the visibility doesn't change, so it only moves vertically uh, horizontally from from one bracket to the next. By changing that or by uh, uh, improving that, could it also move like in a diagonal way and say, okay, we 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 have to improve it, so it it it, it got to the next ch chapter or to the next bracket basically because we we added to it, then it also becomes more visible because we we make it more prominent for the user in in, in the end. Yeah, that's 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 probably uh, possible, but um, we have to think about uh, what. What does evolution mean? So, if it's um, if it's uh, for example, if evolution means to um, improve on quality attributes, that, that just doesn't change uh, the way a user looks at this uh, at the software. But mm -hmm. uh, improving the quality enables us, for example, to deliver new functionality. So something new, which ends up on the left side, for example, and can evolve uh, further on the right. Uh, but this new functionality may be a bit more uh, on, uh, may, may be more visible to, to the user itself. It's possible okay. to move upwards, but um, I think most of the time it's more about creating uh, the, the fundamentals for something new to, to emerge on the map. Okay. I see. Depending yeah. on the context, depending on the mm -hmm. on the um, thing that we are mapping. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so the big question is still: How do we get uh, our maps into a graph database to make use of structured queries? Uh, um, mm -hmm. So the one approach approach could be to okay. The, you know that it's uh, the the query console, the browser, uh, the Neo4j browser. We could do all that stuff to um, create all the nodes and edges and uh, uh, and content by ourselves, which is a tedious task. So I tried this, <laughs> and some of the audience, some people in the audience, maybe as well. Um, yeah. It is fun for some time, but as soon as you have a larger map or have a pile of maps, uh, it's just not not uh, not possible to do it. Um, mm. But the thing that's missing between our uh, math re uh, visual representation and a graph database is we need a formal description of the of the uh, of the map. So there are some uh, tools that aid in um, creating uh, Wardley maps. One of those is uh, online Wardley maps. So um, the basic idea is you've got some kind of DSL. So the stuff on the left side describes how the map uh, is how the map is uh, drawn on the right side. So um, this is useful. We could use this DSL to create um, not only the visual representation. It could be the basis for for what we put in a in a database to allow for further analysis in a graph database. Uh, the downsides is there is no standard yet on how to describe Wardley maps. So this is just specific to for a tool. So um, it lacks some of the features of of uh, Wardley mapping itself. So for example, uh, we're very okay. limited to to express how evolution works or how inertia works. But it's possible to to work together. So one of the things um, we could um, use is uh, we could try to um, rebuild our map with online Wardley maps, use this DSL, and create a parser to put that stuff in uh, the in a graph database. And that is what what uh, what we created uh, as a side project. So we call it Parsley, a parser for Wardley maps. Uh, Parsley is currently capable of of um, taking uh, the formal description of maps in this DSL from online Wardley maps um, and transferring it to a graph database. Um, the original idea was to, to help in the process of analyzing the maps that we had in, the, in, the, in this project. It helped a lot. Um, it was not able to, to answer all the questions, but it uh, helped us to understand the context uh, way better than, than before. Um, I'm talking about Parsley and uh, what, what can be done with this uh, uh, later. But first of all, I'd like to show uh, what, um, what can be done once we've, um, once we've got a representation of our maps in the graph database. So mm -hmm. our beautiful Wardley maps are transformed to graphs, uh, three maps in one database uh, by now. And uh, as already told, now we don't have any positional information. 
at least in the in the visual representation. Uh, if you pick one of these nodes, uh, there's some some data attached to these nodes, and you see uh, there's the data is still there, so we can um, use it to to um, to make sense out of uh, some of the connections and find, for example, stuff which is more or less evolved, more or less visible, or stuff like that. But uh, there's even more that can be done. Um, I'm looking for my bookmarks. Um, so all the um, all the uh, stuff that we created for the map uh, is here. Um, let's find some more interesting um, queries to, to work on that. So for example, we could find um, all the evolution that is going on on a given map. So this is a query that helps us to identify components that are evolving on a given map. So as long as we're talking about simple maps like the ones I showed you, this could be done easily uh, just by looking at the map. But what mm -hmm. about larger sets? What about larger data sets? What about uh, 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 large sets from from a lot of, of maps altogether? So mm, we could ask ourselves, what are the uh, what are the uh, components um, that are evolving um, all all over um, the context? So not only from a given map. So can can you zoom in a little bit, Tom? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's thank you. That's, yeah, yeah, that's better. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. So, querying allows us to to ask questions to our data set. So we can find, for example, all the evolving components in our context. So um, this looks a bit weird now, but you see that uh, there are some, we find uh, the components that we, we saw on the on the maps before, and we've got, we've got some information about where are they, they evolving. Um, we've seen inertia on that maps a lot. So these big black, blocks that tell something about uh, something, uh, some decisions from the past that uh, are hindering or are impediments for, for improvements in the future. Um, these are typically, um, st this is typically stuff that we are interested in. We can create queries to show inertia all over this context. So for example, this, this query tells us to, uh, tells just to find all the components that are associated with inertia. And even more, we can find out uh, on which map this inertia is happening. So imagine a large data set, we have dozens of maps and we can find all that stuff that, that is uh, probably an impediment for further improvements. Um, using querying, it's possible for us to, to create, for example, lists of tasks. So we could um, could see, we could uh, uh, create a query that gives us information about what needs to be done for a certain software system. So we had a map showing all the movements that should be done, um, all the moving that should be happen, uh, that should happen uh, for the contact management system. And what if we want to, to know about all the movement of, across all the maps? So this query helps us to identify all the movements that should be uh, made for a given component. So okay. this, this stuff is helpful to, uh, to aggregate the information from all the maps that we created um, for a given context. So um, these are just some some examples for for the queries that I used in the past. But uh, from here, it's it's uh, easily understandable that uh, there's virtually no limit on what you can do <laughs> to to uh, yeah. make make sense out of all the maps once you just uh, transform these maps to uh, a graph database. So. Um, I was talking about uh, Parsley, which is a small parser that just um, currently is capable of transferring, uh, transforming this um, DSL from online Wortley maps to to uh, Neo4j. And um, I'm looking forward to release maybe in in a couple of of days uh, the 
a, a new release of Parsley, which is um, um, which brings a pluggable architecture. So it's easier to have uh, um, to create plugins that understand different dialects. Um, in the last year, there spawned a lot of uh, new projects in the uh, uh, Wardley mapping community to create DSLs to describe uh, the maps or to transfer uh, information from one mapping tool to another to, to create uh, some kind of interoperability. By now, we don't have a standard for that, this, uh, but there are some groups working uh, actively on, on creating such standards. And uh, we hope that with the next release of um, of Parsley, we can, un we can support this process of uh, creating interoperability between all these tools by giving, um, yeah, uh, an, by, by providing a uh, small project that uh, helps to, to connect all these tools together. So we can transform from one DSL to another or even connect more tools to the world of graph databases. So. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope it's, it's useful uh, for for others as well. So um, I was very happy to to uh, to to do all that querying stuff uh, in the project that I was uh, talking earlier about um, because it saved us a lot of time. It was just easier mm -hmm. to to to, um, to to bring together all the information and to do aggregates and aggregate all that information uh, in, together. Okay, then. I see yeah, there's a uh, lot of comments. That's <clears throat> that's very cool. I, I posted the link to uh, to the GitHub repository where people can find Parsley in the chat. I'll also add it to the video description. So if you if you watch this afterwards, it should be down 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 below. Um, I guess you are uh, happy for feedback uh, and and I guess contributors. So if yes, anybody okay. would like to to participate or or use use and uh, using your feedback to Tom, then please, please do so. Uh, sounds like um, we had a, a pretty wordly, wordly map, uh, uh, you know, how do you say, um, affi 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 affiliate uh, user um, a viewership to today. So I think that's, that hopefully everybody can, can, can give it a spin and, uh, and, uh, and give some feedback as well to you. So, so it's, it's, it's really great. I think it's, it's pretty cool. Um, what's um, what's maybe interesting, uh, except for obviously uh, opening this up for questions. So if anybody has any questions uh, for Tom, please uh, please type it in chat. I, I had one is, and you you hinted at this. So um, uh, with the, the the use case you just described is what what is what what makes it what makes it a good idea to combine a Wardley map with Neo4j, I guess, is, is what, what kind of use cases do you, do you see for, for the, two, the two tools or the two, you know, the two things to, to combine together? You mean further use cases um, besides? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the, I think the major to, uh, use case is to, to um, open mapping up to structured querying. So this, this, was a, this is a game changer for me. So um, using structured queries on that. Um, mm -hmm. It's, I think um, it's, it's not just about persisting uh, the maps itself. So we can, we can use a, a, any storage technology. We could just use plain files for that. That's not the thing. It's, uh, it's all about uh, navigating the graph, navigating the map, finding connections and uh, um, opening uh, the the knowledge which is uh, hidden in all this uh, in all this mapping to structured querying. So, for example, finding uh, I didn't implement this uh, yet, but uh, I'm sure it's uh, it's it's uh, possible finding shortest path uh, from uh, from the user to a certain um, to a certain component. This is important because um, mapping ca uh, can be used to visualize flows, flows of value within our uh, application. So it's uh, mm -hmm. useful to, to understand uh, what are effective ways to navigate a larger, uh, a larger uh, graph, for example. OK, very cool. Uh, I see some questions. So from Peter, have you thought about using a more visual Visual in inverted commas layout, DSL like GraphVis or something else to get the visualizations 
that can look a bit more like the manual created worldly maps because obviously as we saw uh, the, the the graph in, in at least in browser and I guess in Bloom it would be similar uh, is is a bit uh, uh, abstract from <laughs> from the from the uh, the original worldly map. Yes, and good news is there's a lot of people already using GraphWiz to uh, to describe Wardley maps. So Parsley does not yet have a uh, a parser for GraphWiz or for understanding um, the the DSL from GraphWiz. Uh, but with the uh, mentioned already mentioned pluggable architecture, it should be easy to to create uh, a parser for that and to to uh, use. Um, to, to use the uh, descriptions in GraphWiz to uh, um, bring those maps in, in uh, a graph database as well. So GraphWiz is actually used by others. Um, by the time that I um, was working um, on, on that, um, online Wardley maps was the de facto standard, uh, one of the earliest tools that was available. Uh, and most two years later now, there's a lot of tooling available. Um, Pity is we, we lack of those standards, so there's no interoperability yet. Okay. And another question from Ravi, can Parsley output Neo4j to only, online Wardley map? Uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's possible to do so. Um, I've got an, uh, uh, an approach for that. Uh, I won't be able to finish that <laughs> for the next release, but uh, it's uh, in early alpha stage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I um, I think we we uh, mentioned a couple of things. Uh, I don't know how. Um, uh, to speaking about new for change, you mentioned shortest path. I guess uh, some some um, some other graph specific uh, um, or new for change specific, I guess uh, usages or or uh, tools around the APOC library and other uh, and, and and other things like uh, from the. The, the graph data science packages with beyond uh, shortest path, maybe uh, linked prediction or something like that. Could could that be something that is adding value to um, to a Wadley map from from this this perspective? Absolutely. So the tooling that we are using for Wadley mapping uh, is by now focused on creating the map. So it's more or less visual tooling or uh, stuff that helps to create a map. Um, there's there's not, not no uh, tooling available, at least that I know, to to analyze on that. And uh, mm -hmm. having already existing tools uh, for graph analysis uh, is is, uh, is is very good news. For, Though all that needs to be done is to uh, to find a way to transfer the maps into a graph database to use this, or at least in theory. Um, mm -hmm. Though I'm I'm happy to see uh, if other if others um, uh, follow this approach and uh, use use graph databases for for further analysis. So I'd be happy to to know about uh, further use cases or further uh, success stories on this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and I guess uh, people can uh, again to to repeat this. Uh, people can reach reach you on on your website. Um, uh, tangible concepts, which I've linked uh, into the, um, the the video de description on YouTube. Uh, on Twitter, you are at uh, Tom underscore Asl, as well as on Mastodon uh, and um, on the GitHub repository. I guess for Parsley as well so i i guess um yeah reach 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 tom there on on, on any of these uh, of these pathways i guess uh for for feedback or for uh, for for comments and yeah i think with that we are at the end uh of of this neo 4j live uh thank you very much tom for uh um explaining to us what's a wordly map how does it work uh, and how is it used and especially then thank you for creating that um, the tool Parsley for um, making it possible to import uh, the Wardley maps into Neo4j and then do some analysis on it. Uh, I think that that opens some interesting um, usage and pathways uh, for for the the further analysis and further further you know maybe added value hopefully uh, to the whole um, um, you know usage of a a Wardley map inside of of of, of companies or for projects. So um, I'd be curious to see uh, how how this is used uh, more, and I'm, I'm I was very interested to 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 hear and to learn about this. So thank you very much again, Tom, for your time and for for presenting today. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure.
Okay, cool. Thank you all. Um, we, um, uh, we, I mean, I, I will be back tomorrow, uh, uh, more or less same time with uh, Will uh, on uh, chapter seven of the GraphQL uh, full stack applications book. So if you are interested in GraphQL, then uh, tune in tomorrow, uh, same time, same place. Um, if you uh, don't want to miss any uh, of the following episodes of, of Neo4j Live or any other stream we're doing, please uh, follow or yeah, follow on YouTube or on Twitch uh, for uh, a ping about when we are live next. And yeah, with that, I wish you all a, a great rest of your day, rest of your week. I uh, hope to see you soon. Uh, thank you again, Tom. And uh, yeah, until next time. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.